surveyors the Ardalite, an essential preliminary tool in the building of any highway, great or small. And there have been few greater than the one we're going to witness now. The building of the Turkestan Siberia Railway in 1927-1930. The railway was of the greatest importance to Russia in a whole number of ways. Economically to transport grain. Politically, to link up distant areas, ideologically and scientifically, to prove that the new communist creed, and remember this was only in 1927, to prove communism could rival and even outachieve the capitalism of the West. Finally, filmically, Turksip is a classic of early documentary making, an impressionistic pian of praise in luminous images, the record of an heroic endeavor by the working class. And at last, the map will show just how heroic it was. A railway to cross Turkestan to Siberia. A 1,000 mile long ribbon of steel joining up the existing systems, heading north, skirting mountains, crossing rivers and deserts, eventually reaching the link up point at Semipalatinsk. An epic achievement whose story is now told in images to match and with specially selected music. The steppes of Kazakhstan, the year 1925, and the endless empty sky is empty no longer. The long sleep of a nomad encampment is about to be broken. Central government is stretching out a long mechanical arm to end an age-old independence and isolation. Up till now, strangers have been people to be feared and fought. The Cossacks of the steppes have never seen a city, hardly heard of Moscow, and they resent intruders. seemingly from another planet, say they are different. They bring news of the building of a great railway across Turkestan to Siberia, the Turksib, and they say all are friends now. tell more of the railway and its benefits. They call the Turksib the road of life and say that along it will come trucks laden with grain and manufactured goods. It'll bring happiness to the people and answer the dreams of many generations of Cossacks, or so they say. The hopes of the young are one thing, the doubts of the old another, and the new is not easily to be trusted. Six survey teams set out from the south, eight from the north. Sometimes they met with hostility, were refused food, had their markers removed. Some groups were even attacked. To survey it all, 
To cover the whole 1,400 kilometers will take all of 1926 and 27, and last into the summer of 1928, with the construction gangs hard on the heels of surveyors and little time left to draw the maps. Painstaking work in the field, running a year late by the end, will pay off. For the surveyors have improved greatly on the old superficial survey of Tsarist times. In particular, they have found a new way over the Chokpa Pass, shortening the route by 23 kilometers. And at Balkhash, a better line saves another 78 kilometers. shortened by over 100 kilometers, the construction period cut by one year, nearly 35 million rubles saved out of the total construction cost of 212 million rubles. The triumph of the surveyors in the planning of the road of life. Siberia, surplus grain on its way to the silos at the railhead. But though the wheat flows freely on the conveyor belts, there is no way through to hungry Turkestan. The signal is set at stop. That is, until the Turksim is completed. In the cotton fields of Turkestan, the workers toil under a blazing sun. But they grow too little cotton for all Russia's needs, and valuable land is wasted on growing wheat for survival, land that could grow more cotton. So expensive cotton has to be imported, draining the country's economy, while the surplus wheat waits in Siberia. build-up for the war on the wilderness. Battalions of steam cranes imported from America, where Russian teams had been sent to study railway building. Over 3,000 kilometers of steel rails. Whole forests of sleepers. Marshalling yards crowded with dumper trucks. The 
build-up goes on at both ends of the line. And when all is assembled, the assault will go in from north and from south, and at last link up in three years' time. when work begins, the two teams are separated by over a thousand miles of wilderness, of mountain, tundra, forest and desert. The men who worked the desert section remember it vividly. One wrote, it is impossible to recall the heroic labor of the builders without emotion. The temperature rose to over 50 degrees centigrade. Men and animals suffered from the heat and from thirst. Wherever you looked were hilly masses of sand. You could travel scores of kilometers and never come across human habitation. It was particularly difficult in July and August when the frequent windstorms, the simoons as they're called, blew two or three days running. witness recalls, at first there were no machines at all on the project. The spade and cart were the basic means of production. On the southern wing alone, 8,000 men were needed to excavate 2 million cubic meters of ground. Here, the Ukrainian carters were particularly celebrated for their achievements. But all suffered from thirst, for the specially dug wells quickly became salt or dried up altogether. First, there was much talk of the new mechanical excavators. The navvies had never dreamed that they would meet such productive competitors. Of 
On the 15th of June, 1927, the first rail was laid and the first spike driven. This news was carried in all the papers, but it passed most of the workers by, for few could read. was overhanging the route, and it was decided to blast it. It did not block the way, but threatened a landslide. On the day of the blasting, the warning flag was hoisted, the danger call sounded, all work ceased, and the waiting began. Two long drifts were dug at the foot of the cliff and six tons of explosives put there. At the first attempt, the charges did not explode. What was wrong? Were the drifts in the right place? Many had doubts and feared the weight was all for nothing. clear and the doubters praise the dynamiters for their skill and success in pushing the Turksib onward. bitter cold. Fierce frosts of 40 degrees below froze the work, froze the blood. Even the bridge builders were halted, and two arched bridges, three girder bridges, and many minor ones must be built. The Turksib line, the road of life. The greatest goal in the first five-year plan held fast in the grip of the Siberian winter. construction season in the north, 155 kilometers were laid. In the second season, 185. In the third and last, 432 kilometers of rail, embankment, cutting and girder bridge. Hurry 
up, you northerners, they said. The southerners are ahead. For the southern and northern construction gangs were in formal competition. And when the southern sector laid four and a half kilometers in one day, the northern workers replied, that's nothing. We'll lay five kilometers tomorrow. It's quite correct to describe the Turksib as the first high-speed construction project in the USSR. On certain days, the builders laid six kilometers of track. Such a speed of laying was unknown at that time in Russian railway practice. On the railway, many Russians were reborn, were taught to read and write, became a different people. Many Kazakhs came to the project from the most distant settlements. Many a shepherd of yesterday came to the railway and, having proved themselves there, became members of the party. And many others travelled out of the past to see the shape of the future. The first engine was greeted by a crowd of Cossack nomads. It was the first railway engine they had ever seen. Cautiously they came to witness and to participate in the triumph of the Turksib. The great railway built in three years instead of five. The road of life that would now link Turkestan with Siberia link their lives with the rest of modern Russia through the success of steam, the triumph of Turksiv. <laughs>